and a guy like Jalen Milrow who can move around and not necessarily scramble, but keep plays alive. What are the keys as a defensive back to just stay with your guy and you know, not allow him to create explosive plays? Uh, really, man, when a guy like that, you got a guy that creative with his legs and with his throwing ability, um, being able to extend plays, it's hard, man. It's hard to defend. As a defensive back, really, you can only do the only thing you can do is cover your guy, you know? Um, Hoping that, you know what I'm saying, the rush gets there and hoping that uh, our game plan works to perfection. But, you know, I mean, the guy's going to make plays. That's inevitable. Um, the guy's a, a tremendous athlete. He's going he's gonna to extend plays. We just got to do our best job to slow that down throughout the game. Yeah, it was announced today that Frank Brown's going to be the new head coach at Syracuse. How did he sort of help you in your own development here? And what is Syracuse getting in Fran Brown? Uh, again, a tremendous coach, but more so a tremendous person. I mean, Coach Brandon, like I said, he's a, he's a great coach, but like, uh, I feel like what makes Coach Brandon so special, like his uh, relationship like with us off, outside of football, you know, we can make on a personal level. Um, he's been there with me through spiritual advice, emotional advice, you know, uh, when I need to talk about my family, when I'm missing home, he's always there. Like Coach Brandon is one of those people I can count on outside of football. My car breaks down, I know I can call Coach Brandon, you know, so one of those things like, that's the, the person that he is to the core. Like, that's what you get. That's what Syracuse is getting. And we, we're so proud of him, man. Like, uh, hat goes out to him. We're tremendously proud of him. Obviously, that's a big deal to, be, to become a head coach. But the timing of it, uh, is it is that emotionally or men mentally distracting with a big game like this? Uh, no, nah, I mean, we haven't had it before. I mean, Coach Lennon got the Oregon job sort of kind of close to this time. and. Uh, you know, we ended up finishing that year pretty good. So, um, like I said, keeping the main thing, the main thing, man, Coach Friend, is, he brought it in today. He came to practice. He brought energy. He brought juice. I mean, he's still the same old Coach Friend that we know him as. So, it's not a distraction, man. If anything, it's just the show, like, you know what I'm saying, that these coaches do a tremendous job. And when, you know what I'm saying, new opportunities and promotions like that happen, it's just a, you know what I'm saying, a true testimony that, you know what I'm saying, look, like they have lives too. You know, they, we're not the only people achieving our goals, you know, and they have goals and aspirations that they want to accomplish. So, like I said, hat goes out to those friends, man. Yeah, Kendall said that Kirby has brought up this week that Georgia hasn't been able to beat Alabama in Atlanta for an SEC championship. It's for a program that's accomplished so much, what does it mean to have that one box left unchecked and how much of the motivation is that heading in the well, We want to beat them. Um, you know, hey, we want to win the SEC. Um, we face facing Bama, so we want to beat Bama. That's really the end of it. Uh, I haven't beat them. We haven't beat them. So, you know what I'm saying? It's going to make for, for a great matchup. I can't wait to play, but like I said, I would want to beat them. If I'm get back to Coach Brown for a minute, did he let you guys know whether or not he's going to continue coaching with the team through the over the playoffs or is he only going to beat it to Syracuse? Uh, we didn't really ask him that. We kind of just, you know what I'm saying, focused our mindset on Bama. Uh, we can't really dial in to what Coach Brown going to do. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll let us know. You know what I'm saying? If he decides to do whatever he decides, but like I said, right now our focus is on Bama. He ain't told you yet, in other words? No, probably not. No, I ain't, I ain't heard nothing. Yeah. Obviously, CJ and Raylan have had bigger roles of late. What have you seen from those two young linebackers? Uh, guys coming in to work, man. Guys coming in, I mean, Coach Schumann does an amazing job of, you know what I'm saying, getting guys ready in those big shoes. You know what I'm saying? Being a linebacker at Georgia comes with a lot. You got to make calls. You're talking to the D-line. You're talking to the secondary. You know what I'm saying? You're talking to outside back because you're talking to the corners at times. So, like, um, that, that, that's big shoes to fill. And they, and they embrace that role. They come to practice to work day in and day out. They make, you know what I'm saying? They, Of course, everybody makes mistakes here and there. But those guys, they learn quick, you know, and they, and they bought into, you know what I'm saying, the standard in which we try to practice with and which we try to play with. And I, I feel like those guys are going to have a, a very bright future here. Javon, I know this is on the other side of the ball, but what has it been like to watch Kendall Milton have such success for you all the last few weeks, you know, going through the injuries he's gone through to now being play, playing so well for you all at the right time? I'm, I'm excited for him, man. Uh, what a what, what what better person to do the things that he's done but Kendall, you know what I mean? Like, the guy's been through so much, you know what I'm saying, as far as injuries and things like that. Um, probably not going, not things going the way he wanted them to. But, you know, we always say, you know what I'm saying, God might not be there when you want him, but he's always right on time. So, um, like I said, man, I'm proud of him. Um, he's definitely going in the right direction. I'm happy he's on my team. You know, 6'2", 240 coming down here with a full head of steam, man, that's, that's a lot. But, uh, like I said, man, I'm excited for him, man. I, I'm proud.
Yeah, Kendall mentioned how chippy today's practice had been. I know you weren't thrilled how the defense had played after Georgia Tech. Has that Georgia Tech performance maybe sort of recentered or refocused you guys into going into this Alabama game and saying, hey, we have a point to prove that that performance we put out last week isn't who this Georgia defense is? Uh, really, I wouldn't even say we got a point to prove. We're just trying to win. And we know we can't beat that team without having good practices. So we're trying to stack days on top of days on top of days. The game's not going to be won on Saturday. The game's won throughout the week. Whichever team prepares the best, whichever teams have the best practice, whichever team attacks the days, you know what I'm saying, the moments, throughout the days the best, I feel like going to uh, win this game. So that's what that's all we're trying to do, man. We're trying to win the moments. We're trying to uh, take every rep serious. We're trying to really just get game day reps throughout the week. So when we get to the game, it's just second nature that we be able to play fast and free. What's it going to be like to uh, go up against Jermaine Burton on a Saturday as opposed to on a practice field? I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm pretty sure Jermaine's excited, too. Um, I think it's going to be a great matchup. I can't wait to see him play. Fun today, uh, Malachi was announced as a Jim Thorpe finalist. Just what has put him in this position where he's got a chance to take on the trophy as the nation's best uh, defensive back? You know, it's crazy that we was making a little, uh, a little friendly competition that, you know what I'm saying, one of us was going to get it. And, and, like, I mean, I'm not surprised at all, man. The, the guy's a special talent. I mean, when I say special talent, I mean special talent. The guy comes in to work. I mean, he's just one of those guys that you knew stepping on first day on campus. Like, he's one of those guys. Like, his athleticism, the way he's, his willingness to learn, um, his mindset about, you know what I'm saying, practice, the way he leads others. Um, the guy, he's special, man. I, I can't be more proud of a person. I'm personally close to Malachi. I mean, I play aside, right beside the guy. So, um, like I said, man, I couldn't be more proud, man. Hey, Javon, you talked about uh, winning the moments, and uh, your head coach has an innate ability to you know, change up a little mantra for, to make you focus on this practice or this game or something like that. I was just wondering what the message in the locker room has been this week, or either a couple words, or what he's been reinforcing in the offense this week. Uh, really just don't let the game be too big for you. Um, you know, we, we've played in big games before. Um, like I said, just really just dialing in and, and doing the little things, whichever team does the little things best. Uh, he feel like, you know what I'm saying, we feel like that they have a, a better advantage of winning this game. So just dial in on the little things. Don't take them for granted and really just dial in on the things that you can improve on. Those little small, uh, you know what I'm saying, stepping stones that people take for granted. He said those are the things that you need to lock in on in order for you to be successful in the game. Let's take two more questions. John, we, we've seen you win a couple of defensive MVP awards and we've heard quarterbacks getting in the rhythm or running back. I mean, can you really get in the rhythm of safety or how much of what you do is kind of dependent on opportunity versus maybe things you see or re react quickly? Uh, I don't know necessarily about getting into a rhythm. Um, really just, I feel like preparation helps you out with that. Um, you being able to anticipate things before they happen allows you to probably make more plays than the average player. But um, as far as the rhythm, I just feel like you gotta have, gotta have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your game plan and confidence in your teammates to just be out there and play free, man. Uh, I don't really know like the rhythm and things like that, but that swagger that, you know what I'm saying, the defensive back kind of has to have in order to be successful, in my opinion, that's more of, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the edge that we have. I feel like we have in our back end, just the, the swagger and the confidence that we have in one another. Hey, Javon, you talked about the three wins at Mercedes-Benz Stadium last year. What do you think the vibes will be like when you walk in there? And is there anything different or special about playing there? Uh, it's always special. I'm a Georgia boy, so, you know, I take pride in playing in that stadium, man. Uh, really just, I mean, it's hard to get to the SEC championship, man. It's hard, and we don't take that for granted. What an opportunity, um, what an opponent that we're facing. Um, and like I said, it's a great challenge ahead of us, and I'm, I'm trying to get it done. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks you,